good morning as we have uh, members in Latin America and good afternoon for our European members. Um, we have registered nearly 90 participants uh, to this park today with Banco Central do Brazil on its sustainability agenda. I would just give a short introduction uh, about how this idea came. So for the most of you who know the idea of a spark, a spark is a 33 minutes webinar uh, on a specific topic suggested by one of our CIBP members. Uh, our CCOP member and who holds actually the CIBP presidency suggested us to have an interview um, and an insight of uh, Banco Central do Brazil strategy, global strategy and agenda for the coming years. And as CCOP, as one of our main CIBP members, has established since long a very cordial and friendly and collaborative exchanges with the Brazilian regulatory regulators and also with Banco Central do Brazil. And we're very interested to hear about that too. Um, so thank you again to our Brazilian member to uh, facilitating this interview and this uh, meeting around the topic with Mr. Ricardo Harris from Banco Central do Brazil. And thank you, Kip, uh, for being our moderator today. Uh, it's a pleasure working with you, and um, I wish you all an interesting session. Uh, for the questions, I would suggest that while the presentation is ongoing, don't hesitate to use the chat or at a certain moment, raise your hand. And uh, last detail, this spark will exceptionally last 60 minutes instead of 33 minutes. Thank you very much uh, for being with us. Mr. Harris, thank you very much for accepting CCUB's um, invitation. And as CIBP, we are very happy to get to know you and to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to start by by thanking the the organizers for for inviting me today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and talk to you to about this 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 important subject. Uh, okay. So this is our agenda for today uh, in my presentation, which I intend to be somewhere around twenty five minutes. I will try to give you uh, an overview of why and how this, the sustainability issues entered in the radar of central banks and talk a little bit about our role and, and what the Central Bank of Brazil is doing, especially from a, a, a regulatory perspective to, to promote this sustainable, sustainable uh, finance. And as you, as you may know, uh, in 2020, we launched a new sustainability pillar at our institutional work agenda. And it's a very broad uh, agenda that encompasses different initiatives within different areas uh, at the central bank, uh, like supervision, regulation, monetary policy, and so on and so forth. But today, I, I will focus particularly on, on what we have been doing related to, to regulation. And I will present you a set of regulations we released last, actually, last September to, to, to address uh, social, environmental, and climate risks within the, the, the Brazilian uh, financial system. So uh, when, when does the sustainability agenda begin to enter the, the central bank's radar in a, in a stronger way? I think uh, one of the first voices in, in the central bank's com community to call attention for, for the issue of the relevance of climate risks in, 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 in the financial system was Mark Carney. He was then the, the president, the, the governor of the, the Bank of England. In, 20, in 2015, he gave a speech, uh, which now is actually famous, at the London headquarters of the, the, the traditional uh, insurance company Lloyd's warning uh, uh, of the, the relevance of climate risks to, to financial stability. At first, this speech was very much questioned, to, to tell you the truth. A major 
British newspaper made a, a harsh criticism questioning whether it would be the bank's role to, to worry about climate change. Uh, the following day, there, there, there was even a, an ironic Twitter mocking the, the, the Bank of England by saying that they should perhaps also get involved with the, the topic of the war in Syria. In short, uh, Mark Carney was attacked from all sides regulated entities, investors, newspapers. And in the end of the day, a lesson was learned that whenever there is a perception, uh, justified or not, that uh, when the monetary authority somehow interferes with the way capital is allocated in the economy, this authority will have its mandates questioned. So this that's something we, 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 we learned from this. And, but, uh, a few years later, that view began to change. In, in 2017, the NGFS, uh, the Network for Green the Financial System, was founded. It was it is today deemed the, to be the, the main group of central banks focused on discussing the impacts of climate change on the global financial system. And to give you a, 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 a gist of this, uh, the importance of this group, that there was there were uh, eight members that correspond to approximately 30% of the, the global emissions initially. And, but today, uh, there are more than 100 central banks and supervisors from all over the world, accounting for more than 85% of carbon emissions, including the, the central bank in, Bra in Brazil. And the central bank in Brazil, I'm proud to say that in the beginning of this year, we were invited to, to, to be part, a member of the steering group of the, the, the NGFS. So uh, there is no, of course, there is no doubt that the, 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 the COVID pandemic has encouraged a lot the, the adherence uh, as it became clear, more clear to, 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 the, to that disruptive events have a high potential to, to, to trigger uh, systemically severe crises. Uh, but where does the role of the central bank fit in this in this agenda? Well, in essence, in essence, uh, the the mandate of the central banks is to ensure price stability and financial stability. The, 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 the this sustainability agenda and the mitigation of the effects of climate change have everything to do with both missions, and have a, a, a positive externality of helping to foster the development of sustainable finance. From the point of view of price stability, it's undeniable that climate change have a significant impact on, on economic variables in, in the relevant horizon for monetary policy with effects for on, on foods and, and energy prices and etc. And in other words, climate change leaves us more vulnerable to more frequent macroeconomic shocks. To give you an example, last year there was a lot of discussion uh, going on here in Brazil about the impacts that uh, prolonged droughts had on the price of, lit of electricity and the consequence of this on the on other prices in the economy and on inflation expectations. Uh, so the, the increase uh, in frequency of droughts, floods and frosts also directly affect food supply and, and prices in general. On the other side, on the on the financial stability aspects of our mandate, the key word here is, is risk. The central bank's mission is to ensure the proper management of these risks by the financial system. We, we have many examples of that. Uh, uh, climatic shocks can affect specific sectors of the real economy, such as real estate, uh, agriculture, as well, uh, and, and generate vulnerabilities for the, the, the financial system. Unfortunately, uh, Brazil is not immune to, to climate change. It, it is estimated that extreme weather events have uh, caused uh, losses close to 170 billion uh, reais in the last decades, especially caused by the increase in frequency of droughts uh, and floods. In this, in this side box, uh, it shows a simulation made by the, I, the, the IPCC, the UN linked body of climate scientists, showing the, the impacts on temperature, precipitation, and, and drought periods in the different scenarios of increasing global temperature to, to 
to two and four degrees uh, uh, Celsius. Sorry. And of course, agriculture is is one of the most vulnerable sectors. If these scenarios come come to tr come true. So uh, in this slide, I show a simulation made by IMP, the the National Institute for Space Research. It's the, more or less the equivalent to, to our NASA here in Brazil. And we did they did this simulation to to for over 5,000 Brazilian municipalities with uh, scenarios for 2013, 2050 regarding regarding the increased frequency of severe droughts. That what draws my attention in this graph uh, is the possibility of severe impacts on the southeast and the north. Uh, northern of uh, Paraná states, which is an, an important uh, grains production area. And also in Brasilia, where I, I, I live, I think everyone that lives here already noticed that in the last uh, uh, four to five years, the, the winters are becoming becoming uh, drier and, 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 and hotter significantly. And it is uh, this is this this is what is happening in Paraná states is uh, that's shown in the in the graph is very consistent consistent with to to what happened last September and the first months of this year. We had a, a severe drought in this region that strongly affect many corn uh, we and wheat crops, but also the cattle raising farms to the point that of the the the, the animals starting to die due to to lack of water to drink. Uh, so in summary, we, we are going through and we'll be going through a drastic structural shift arising from the climate change and its economic consequence. And central banks need to ensure that the financial sector is ready to first to finance this process and, and, and second to properly manage the risks of this process. So uh, central banks have, in my view, three different roles to play in this regard. Uh, first, to raise awareness of the potential risks arise, arising from the climate change. Second, ensuring that the financial system uh, properly manages the, the, the risks arising from, from, from this process. And finally, give transparency to the risks and opportunities arising from this, from the, from this, this transition, so that the negative externalities generated by the activities are more evident and are the uh, are properly priced, and there is market discipline. So, uh, as I will show you in the next slides, the Central Bank of Brazil has acted in exactly this way. In terms of uh, awareness, we uh, the inclusion of the simple inclusion of the uh, sustainability pillar in our institutional agenda in September of 2020 has helped to 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 turn on the yellow lights in the financial system for this topic. And I have no doubt that the financial institutions are much more attentive to the aspects of sustainability and how they conduct their business. And along the same lines, last year, uh, we also published regulations uh, that deal exactly with the other two points to, to, to improve the management of social, environmental, and climate risks by the financial institutions and to require uh, greater transparency about the risks and opportunities related to, 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 to these topics. So the first set of regulations were published last September, as I mentioned, and it's all about uh, a new regulation on risk management and the implementation of a social, environmental and climate responsibility policy by, by the, the financial institutions. So we, we focus on two different regulatory dimensions here. Uh, the first one deals with uh, a prudential view, uh, or in other words, how it is expected from the financial institution to deal with th those risks. And, and the second one centers around the implementation of a sustainable policy and, po and positive actions related to the social, environmental and climate aspects and the way the financial institution will conduct its business and, and deal with clients, employees, and, and other uh, stakeholders. So uh, on the prudential, deep diving on the prudential side of things, we started by unmistakably defining in the regulation what is 
a social risk, an environmental risk, or a climate risk event. Uh, how does it look like? Giving clear examples. Then we required that uh, for those risks, the same uh, general risk management practice uh, already established for, for the more, let's say, traditional uh, risks in the in the banking in the banking sector, like uh, the credit market, uh, operational liquidity risks, etc. So we required uh, we applied the same the same requirements like stress tests, risk appetite statements, uh, business continuity plans, and so on and so forth. And we also include more specific requirements for 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 those risks, like monitoring the reputation and concentration risks of counterparties. Uh, from the from the from the, the other dimension from the policy establishment uh, perspective, as I, I, I mentioned before, each institution will need to consider the social, environmental, and climate responsibility issues when establishing the principles and guidelines it will adopt for a, a positive contribution when when conducting its business and on the relationships with stakeholders. This this uh, responsibility policy will be will have a, a mandatory disclosure, together with the 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 action the the positive ap positive actions that will be taken regarding such policy, and the criteria that will be used to evaluate how effective those actions turn out to be. So so now let me turn your attention to the the, the second set of regulations. Uh, this is directly linked to the previous one. Uh, and it, as it focuses on the disclosure aspects of the, the social, environmental, and climate-related risk. It is all about incorporating CFD uh, disclosure recommendations to, to Brazil regulatory framework. Uh, this regulation, uh, I think, placed Brazil in, at the forefront uh, as, one, uh, uh, an, as an example uh, of a jurisdiction that's adopted mandatory uh, transparency requirements in line with the, the TC, TCFD recommendation. TCFD is a task force on climate-related financial disclosures created by the, the, the Financial Stability Board to, uh, to, to create uh, uh, disclosure recommendations related to, to, to climate risks for those do, who do, doesn't know. Uh, so, as you may know, uh, the TCFD uh, they they focus mainly on on the the climate related risks and, and opportunities. But in Brazil, we 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 enlarged the, the the scope to include the social and the the environmental issues, considering the the, the importance of these topics in Brazil. So, uh, and we are implementing this regulation uh, in basically in two phases. The first one that was already released last September focuses on the, the more qualitative aspects of the, the, the TCFT disclosure recommendations, uh, uh, focus, focusing on the, 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 the governance, uh, the strategy, and the, the risk management practices of the, the, the companies. While the, the, the second one, uh, which is scheduled for, for the end of this year, will concentrate on the quantitative aspects like those related to, to metrics and, and targets. So uh, financial institutions will be required then to, to issue a report on social, environmental, and climate rate risk management. And it's worth mentioning that this report goes as a uh, way beyond the, the, the CFD climate-based uh, perspective. I, I think I, I, I'm repeating myself here uh, about the, the, this enlarged scope because we, we, we included the, the social and the environmental dimension. But also, uh, we, are also we are also innovating here because we, we are doing this uh, by also by ad adopting uh, a standardized templates very similar to, to what uh, is currently present in the pillar three standards of the Basel framework. And we, we are doing all this in a proportional way, uh, uh, depending on the, the institution size and, and risk profile. 
uh, in Brazil we have uh, the prudential regulation. It follows uh, a rule of uh, we have a segmentation of the, the financial system to apply the regulation depending on the, the, the institution size and risk profile. We have five, five segments, uh, S1, S2, S3, and so on. And the, the more complex ones, uh, they have to, com to, to comply full, 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 full requirements to, 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 to the Basel uh, requirements, and you have a proportionality on, on this depending on this these characteristics. So uh, let, now let me turn your attention to the, the third and, and the final regulation I will talk about today. This is probably, I think, the most interesting, at least for me, because it, of its disruptive potential. It involves technology, uh, the use of satellite images, uh, connecting different government databases, and, and in the future we may use uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, today we have a system in place at the, the Central Bank of Brazil, which is called uh, SICOR, where all rural credits low loans uh, granted in, in banks in Brazil should be recorded in the system, even before the money is delivered to the producer. So uh, this system includes key information on each credit operation, uh, including uh, the, the, the geo-reference information on the enterprise that is receiving the credit. This is very important. Uh, so the system goes far beyond the typical credit bureau because it has much more information than the usual financial characteristics of the, the operation, like duration, interest rates, etc. It has information about the crop being financed, the techniques being used, the production system, and so on and so forth. A lot of technical information. So, uh, but uh, mostly important, it it has the uh, data data fields already in place regarding sustainability aspects, and it also uh, allows us for for automatically uh, verify some issues that these operations might present, such as those regarding the use of this label like labor. Uh, the overlapping of geodetic uh, coordinates and so and so on and so forth. So uh, we want to transform this system in a sustainable rural credits bureau by first developing uh, new data fields in the system to be filled with more sustainable rural credits characteristics, and through the integration, and this is very important, uh, of the system uh, to other public databases spread. Uh, in other government agencies. It will allow us to, to verify the compliance of this, this credit operations, uh, first with, with uh, uh, legislation and, 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 and infra-legal uh, regulation, and, and, uh, and also check for other uh, sustainable issues, such as, uh, and, and, and uh, will allow us to, for instance, to, to stop banks from, from financing projects that overlap protected or embargoed areas, uh, indigenous lands, among other uh, restrictions already uh, included in the legislation. So it will function as a sort of a second line of defense and we'll, we'll, it will help us to also to, to, to mitigate the social, environmental and climate rate risks in, in, in the financial sector. And we are we are working also on a new rule that will set uh, a couple of uh, set of uh, definitions for social, environmental, and climate-related additionalities in rural credits. And the key objectives, uh, the key objectives of the bureau is to uh, uh, diminish the, the 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 information asymmetry, and and to help uh, identify uh, credits operations with which complies with these sustainability criteria. So to achieve this, uh, we, it will follow a, a, an open finance philosophy where uh, at the end of the day, uh, the data uh, about the credit operation belongs to, to, to the debtors. So it means that they, they will be able to, to share the, their detailed credit information with, every, with anyone, uh, other bank, a supplier, 
uh, a green certification company, a securitization company, and the list goes on and on. And uh, this, this open finance functionality together with the, the inclusion of the sustainability information will allow for, for better credit conditions and, and funding options for, for the producers. So we expect this initiative uh, will help to create the, the proper incentives for a greener agricultural sector and, and also a, a flourishing uh, green bond market in Brazil. Okay, I'm coming to the conclusion of my presentation. Uh, this the, and I, this Chinese word for for crisis, uh, Wei Ji, uh, is shaped by the the two ideograms that mean danger or risk and opportunity. I think the the climate risk can be a risk, uh, the the climate crisis can be a a, a risk uh, to the financial system, but it it could also become a great opportunity. Well, let me start with the, the bad news. Unfortunately, Brazil was the, the fifth uh, country that most emit, emitted uh, GHG uh, in the world in 2020, somewhere between three and four percent of the global net emissions. And we we are clearly we were clearly on the wrong side of the road during the, during the pandemic. Uh, we had a 9.5 increase in, in our carbon uh, emissions, while the rest of the world decreased by by almost seven, and agriculture directly or and indirectly was responsible for 73 percent of the country's emission. 27 of the emissions came from the direct emissions of methane from the the the, the cattle the cattle raising, and the other 46 is related to to the land use change, mainly because of deforestation. Sadly, we are the country with the most deforestation in the world, followed by Indonesia and Congo. The good news is that at COP26, at the end of last year, uh, I think Brazil made some important, important commitments, which signal a, a, a positive path for the future. We, we signed a, an agreement with more than 100 countries to, to, to reduce the emission of methane by, by methane gas by 30% and with another 140 more or less other countries we, we we also commit to eliminating deforestation by 2030 it was a very bold uh, commitment and specialists argue that it is indeed possible to achieve these goals with the adoption of uh, good good management practice in, in agriculture, such as crop, forest, livestock integration, no tillage, recovery of degraded pastures, and deforestation, reforestation initiatives. There is also a, a, a clear consensus that we have the technology to increase the productivity of Brazilian agriculture without necessarily increasing the cultivated areas. So I, I end my, my presentation with this image taken at the heights of the pandemic of the flow of the cargo ships, cargo ships uh, loaded with uh, soybeans, mostly to China, but it, it's soybeans, but it could be uh, corn, uh, wheat, uh, meat, poultry, whatever, you name it. And I think this image gives us uh, a lot of food for thought. It makes me wonder what would happen if China which is currently our main buyer, uh, decides to put aside the very pragmat pragmatic uh, vision that they still have today and start demanding a more sustainable product with, uh, with a greener footprint, uh, such as Europe has already started. So to, just to, 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 to give an example, some countries has been discussing the implementation of uh, a tariff designed to, to price the cost of carbon on imported products. And of course, this brings uh, some risks, but also an excellent opportunity for Brazil. First, because a considerable chunk of the Brazilian agriculture is already quite sustainable, I might say. And second, because 
uh, we have a very clean electricity matrix compared to, to, to other countries. It's around 83 or 85 percent of rene renewable uh, source against the world average of around 25 percent. So this makes the carbon footprint of our products very low. So Brazil must take advantage of this differential and take the opportunity to, 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 to deepen and explore uh, new markets. Uh, and without a doubt, sustainable finance will play an important role in financing the, the investments needed and will be a lot needed. And the Bureau is, I mentioned earlier, will be, I think, very helpful in this process. So in this, in this constant, context, I think the, the, the role of the Central Bank of Brazil will be to, to ensure that the financial system is ready to finance this process in a safe, safe and efficient way. That's all I have to say today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Thanks so much for your presentation. We have about uh, 25 minutes. Um, I haven't had any questions in the chat, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and uh, if you don't mind, Ricardo, I'm going to be a little bit provocative. Would you mind if I throw some hard questions at you? Okay. Okay. So um, <clears throat> let's go back to some of the core uh, assumptions that we're talking about. Only seven years ago, um, you know, somebody actually presenting this idea that the central bank should somehow be responsible for what's going on with our climate um, was laughed out in the in the newspapers in England and now seven years everybody's running on the bandwagon. I, I think there's a lot of white whitewashing going on. Um, so um, if I don't know if any of you have seen the 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 film by Leonardo DiCaprio and Meryl Strip called uh, Don't Look Up. But um, what I see here is is adding fuel to the flames in some senses. We're putting uh, more bureaucracy, uh, more approval of the government for loans. All this is going to create more, more taxes for Brazil, more bureaucracy in the country that has uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers every year uh, does a, an annual survey of tax complex complexity, and, and Brazil is the top um, by far. The average citizen. The average Joe pays about 72 different taxes and he has no idea what he's really paying for. So Brazil is extremely um, bureaucratic and it's extremely expensive. Uh, the productivity hasn't increased even with all the social programs that have gone in the last 20 years. So what I see here is in some ways, again, I'm being provocative, Ricardo. We're just <laughs> playing around here to see thinking outside of the box and new points of view, which is my job as a moderator. You know, are we really just flowing fuel on the, fuel on the flames? And we will go back to don't look up. What's really needed is a common language. I mean, you can have the technology to, to destroy the climate killer. You can have the policy in place. But <coughs> until these farmers that are shipping their soybeans to Chinese that are making pigs to go from basically consumption of calories based on plants to consumption of calories based on protein. The model itself is a model that's not sustainable. Um, so the hard question is, when you look at this economic model of Brazil, who is still highly dependent on commodity exports, and you look at this, just the true disruption going on in what agriculture is there to do, which is to feed us, <clears throat> and the true disruptions going on there are huge changes in consumption patterns. People are really looking at where that food came from. Did it come from an animal that was mercilessly killed in, 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 in to make some proteins or was it grown in a lab? So you have the whole change in consumption patterns. You have the whole change in technology to non-animal proteins. You have the whole change in how we actually produce our food. Do we need to ship it across the sea to produce the pork or can we do um, more vertical uh, farming in the in the locale where it's actually needed. So I see so many disruptive changes happening along the whole supply chain, and then each of the member of the supply chain is looking at their little part of it without looking at the big systemic picture. Um, you know, so um, my question to you is, <clears throat> um, 
what is the central bank's role in going beyond lots of nifty technology and 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 expensive policies that are going to create more taxes and really creating a common language especially given the current political situation in brazil we have a current administration um, which is viewed by the world as not being one of the most proactive in terms of climate change and we have an election coming up in just a few months um, where the main contender for sort of the what they call the middle road in brazil so we have the old guy that was thrown out for corruption and then we have the new guy that's the you know the the, the rebel ranger and we were hoping for this sort of middle road that was going to concentrate around uh, the governor of sao paulo who just today announced that he's dropping out so as the race becomes more polarized that common language that we need to to do to look up uh that leonardo capatri capatri couldn't do uh becomes diminished so my question is is what is the central bank's role in creating a common language that gets down to these farmers and gets down to these economic models which in the long term are unsustainable okay sorry to give you the easy question first <laughs> nobody <laughs> asked any questions so <laughs> all right let, let me try to, to to answer to this well uh i think uh the central banks cannot solve climate change let me state this from the beginning <clears throat> and uh i think uh, the the most the, the biggest part of this challenge will have to be to be uh, conducted by by legislators and of course i think central banks uh, the companies and society in general have to get to get involved so uh, uh, the central bank is limited by its legal mandates it's limited by its legal mandates of as i as i i show in my presentation of uh, uh, of uh, price and and financial stability so but still there is a lot we can do to help on this and we can also help coordinate the 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 efforts on, on this direction and we, we we can try to 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 help the, the uh to better to better allocate uh, the, the 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 huge amounts of investments that will be need to this to this to this transition and 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 the, uh, allow the, the 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 financial sector to 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 be ready to 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 finance these investments and to proper management proper manage the risks uh related to to, to to all this process so uh again that is that, uh, the the role uh, uh, of central banks is very much limited and we can we can raise awareness we can uh make sure the financial system is 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 properly managing the risks and we can uh contribute to to disclosure to the disclosure of uh, of all the risks and opportunities involved in this in this transition i think that's 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 my answer i don't know if, if i answered your question but um well <clears throat> let me uh i actually did find a question here there was a lot of people thanking you for your presentation and your time um just to get back to that for people that don't really know brazil as an insider um, you know, Brazil was a dictatorship for about 30 years, so a very centralized control. And then in the 80s, it started to um, transform into a very young democracy, which most Brazilians consider it to still be. And then uh, in the 90s, it started to actually put regulatory um, teeth into institutions that were independent from political functions. So Ricardo's central bank is actually fairly um, independent politically. Uh, from the administration. They've struggled to try to maintain it that way. And every time um, political uh, waves come over to try to change that, they, they've been pretty successful. So I would actually argue the opposite. I think that you guys is a very important um, autonomous institution with a highly integrated voice with the private sector could actually do more. Um, but I'm wondering if um, Juliana Carvalho would like to answer her ask her question directly about the open banking and the rural credit, uh, the Green Bureau, or would you like to ask? Would you like me to ask that for for you, Juliana? Juliana, would you like to 
just respond if you want to go ahead and ask Ricardo directly or if you'd like me to do that. I can ask directly, no problem. Um, can you hear me? I was having internet problems. Yes, we can. Go ahead, Ju. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, she's having internet problems. So her question is, um, so Brazil, and I think this, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Ricardo, I think this is an initiative of the central bank, like some of their payment uh, ideas. They have a new payment system called PIX, but there's a new, uh, 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 a new concept being implemented in Brazil called open banking. Many of you probably already know it, where the consumer is actually the owner of his data and can take that to any institution. And then it looks like, I don't, I'm not aware of the Green Bureau program, Ricardo, maybe you can explain that. But I think Ju's question was, um, is the Green Bureau, which is based on the open bank concept, something that other countries have also done? And um, what is your um, uh, take on the Green Bureau? So why don't we go from there, Ricardo? <clears throat> Well, I, I'm not aware of any other central bank with this with anything similar to 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 the green, this green river. But I have to explain the the origin of the, all this. We have, uh, as I said in my as I told in my presentation, we had this system that the central bank called Secor, which uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, where all the the rural credit uh, operations in Brazil have to be registered. Uh, prior to, to the, the actual financial disbursement of any money to, to the producer. And why we have this? We have this because most of the, historically, most of the uh, rural credits uh, uh, operations in Brazil uh, has, uh, has uh, government money, has is subsidized. So that's why we have this system at the central bank to, to, to control all of this. So we, we, what we are doing is transform this system that has, that has a very rich database of information, detailed information of the, 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 of the, the, cred, the rural credit operations uh, into something that can be used can be shared this information with with anyone. So the it, it means that and actually the, the the regulation about this is has been released uh, uh, last week, and the system will be uh, online for anyone uh, starting on second May this year. So uh, from second May this year, uh, a producer um, will uh, will be able to allow anyone. For instance, another another bank that he wishes to 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 get a, a better credit condition because it has sustainable practice, for instance, or a supplier, or that he's somehow negotiating a, a, a supplier's credit, or for instance, a, a green certification company that needs to 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 make a due diligence in order to 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 be able to issue uh, a green label for for this producer uh, he can access this uh, directly the system and have all the detailed information about the the credit operation of this this producer so i think it will be uh, it, it's a hard hit on the 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 information asymmetry and for instance, uh, in the, the example I mentioned about the, 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 the green certification company, it will be like a fast track for him because uh, it will, all the, 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 the information will be cross-checked with all those other databases that is, are spread in the government. And it will be faster and it will be cheaper probably. So that's why we, we are what we are, we are, we are planning to do. Thanks, Ricardo. Nilo Vinicius Sattler asked a question. Um, he says, what about nudging? Can the VCB give a little push in the right direction? Can you, can you, Nilo, can you talk? Can you uh, explain that question a little bit more? If not, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, good morning, guys, and good afternoon. Good morning, Nilo. Thanks for bringing some perspective to us. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, as an economist, uh, there's this new field of of the science of economy that is uh, behavioral 
economics. So we get this this concept of nudging, which is like a little push in the right direction. And I think you you might be familiar with that. So uh, my question on this term is was to be can the bank, can the central bank of Brazil uh, not directly, as Ricardo has has answered uh, earlier, but in somehow may, maybe uh, through CCOR, give this give for the credit uh, rural credit or other institutes that are based on credit to finance and funding the right ones and I don't know it's come from the bank come from the bank uh, the central bank or might come from the legislation chamber or the, even the banks uh, what are your thoughts on this Ricardo so maybe I'll just summarize your question Nilo as I understood it and then if I got it wrong please correct me so you want to know what the, the central bank's role is in using um, behavioral economics to also um, address this role of uh, sustainability and environmental um, risks within the financial uh, within the financial systems. Is that is that your question? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Ricardo. Yeah. Um, uh, well, let me try to answer this question by maybe by paraphrasing the the, the Nobel Prize winning economist uh, Joseph Stiglitz. Uh, I think this this sustainability agenda necessarily involves a, a discussion about uh, decreasing the allocation of capital to, to 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 activities sometimes very profitable, but with neg negative externalities for the planet, and at the same time increasing the allocation of capital for for activities uh, which which are uh, sometimes less profitable but which brings positive externalities. And I think when you have this type of market failure, uh, the, the state action is, is generally required. Uh, I think uh, the central bank, when he, he, he places uh, st stronger, strong requirements on, on, on banks to, to deal with uh, to, to, in order to improve the risk management of this, those risks, uh, he's, of course, he's nudging. He's making the bank and making the bank the, the banks aware of uh, more aware of this risk. Uh, they have to 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 start allocating their credit portfolio to 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 greener uh, to greener options. So I think uh, this this nudging effect, as you mentioned, uh, is 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 very present here. And of course, uh, when you when you when you improve the the, the the disclosure requirements, you have also the the market discipline, that that also uh, creates the, the 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 incentives, in the end of the day, in order to 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 have a uh, better better a better uh, capital location in terms of uh, uh, green finance, sustainable finance. Thanks, Ricardo. We have another question and we might be able to take one more depending on how long this goes. So if anybody else has another question, just field it in the chat and uh, moderate it. Uh, so Leonardo de Lima, if you want to ask it directly, feel free. If you'd rather have me ask it, um, I can go ahead and add. He's asking about the quantitative aspect of risk management and where you're getting your main sources of data related to GRSAC besides the IPCC, uh, which you might want to explain, Ricardo, to uh, to the folks here that are not familiar with how uh, with with some of the main Brazilian metrics and the INPE, uh, which were inside of your presentation. Do you want to complement that at all, Leonardo, or should we go straight to uh, to Ricardo? I think your question is pretty straightforward. No, oh, that's OK. I can go forward. All right. Thanks. Ricardo? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, you touch upon some something that is is I think one of the main discussions within central banks today, which is concerning this 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 bringing this agenda sustainable this climate climate uh, change agenda to to central banks, with, which is the lack of uh, of data, the, the 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 lack of consistent granular. Uh, uh, and broad uh, 
data for 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 to in order to to try to model these risks. Climate risk, for instance, is a very different dif difficult uh, risk to, to 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 model because the the, the scenarios are are very very hard to 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 create. They are usually longer longer. They have a longer term uh, than than other more more traditional risks in the in the in the banking sector. So all of this puts some some difficulties and, and a lot of method new methodologies are being being created. And and what we we try to do in the regulation is as I mentioned do it in a in a proportional way, so that the more complex with uh, bigger uh, financial institutions can can have the the, the full requirements. Don't for so for instance in terms of uh, scenario analysis, sensibility analysis, test stress, this, those things that are more complex are required only for 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 the the, the, the bigger uh, banks, and the more simple and mm. the more uh, the more the smaller uh, financial institutions they, they usually require uh, uh, simpler also simpler uh, risk management practice. I like that. I like the idea of, of making it simpler because a lot of times uh, I think when we approach a very complex problem like sustainability, our natural intuition is to, with good intention, but our natural is, intuition is to throw technology and regulation, uh, which, as I said before, just feeds fuel to the fire. I mean, if you just look around you, you don't even have to look up. Uh, you can see how economic resources are inefficiently allocated um, in hugely simple ways to just stop regulating, to stop making reports uh, that most people don't under understand or look at. Uh, my, uh, my girlfriend is from the western part of Brazil, um, from a place called the Pantanal, <clears throat> which is a wetlands the size of France and that has the world's largest biodiversity. It has toucans and piranhas. So we often go out there by car. It's about a 12 hour ride. And we see all of these trucks with uh, containers offloaded from Chinese uh, cargo ships, uh, bringing their goods to the nearby border of Paraguay, where the Brazilians will go to a place called Casa China and buy those same goods that arrived into the port of Santos without paying taxes. So we see how the system feeds on itself. You know, we're, we're driving uh, thousands of kilometers to try to get around all of these regulations and expenses that are created uh, as an attempt to a solution to a very complex problem when it's really needed a systemic look at the problem. And that's part of the problem of creating these agencies. Every agency says, well, we only have this amount of authority and autonomy. Uh, and, and nobody looks at the systemic point of view. And I guess at the end of the day, um, it comes down to what we're doing here, uh, which is creating a common language, understanding each other, asking the hard questions, uh, coming up with, um, with some new ideas and sharing this. Um, Ricardo, would you like to share your, your email uh, in, the, in the chat? So if people have questions or follow up or, or other issues that they'd like to um, bring up directly with you, would you be willing to share your, your email with the folks here in the chat? And um, I'll do as, the same as well. And I don't know if uh, Valeria or Ricardo would like to make uh, any closing remarks here in our last one minute. Would you like to go ahead and, and close this out, Ricardo? And then if um, you can finalize our, our wonderful 60-minute uh, spark. We didn't quite double it, but we, we certainly had a good time in fielding some of the harder questions and digging a little deeper underneath the uh, 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 underneath the show, the showcase there of, of, of what you guys have been doing. So, um, Ricardo, would you be willing to share your email with the folks? And then why don't you give your final word and we'll have uh, Valeria close out our day. Thanks. OK, okay I just put the, my email address at the, the chat box. Uh, and I just want to thank you for this opportunity. I think uh, we it, it doesn't end here. I think we have a long uh, agenda ahead of us in this sustainability issues. Uh, there is a lot of to, to, to going on currently at the central bank and we, we, I, I, we, we, we will 
uh, continue to, I think this is something that will have a long-term impact on, on, on the work of the central banks. And just want to thank you again uh, for inviting me. It was a, a big pleasure to discuss with you this, this important subject. Thanks so much for your time, Ricardo. Valeria, would you like to close us out in one more spark? Thank you very much, uh, Kip. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Harris. It was indeed a, a very rich encounter uh, with all the questions that you had and uh, through and that came up through your presentations. Um, just a big thank you. Uh, I learned a lot also. Indeed, you were right. The last image is quite impressive. It says a lot how the world is turning today. Uh, let's see if we can make a change uh, all together. Um, so thank you again to all the participants for your uh, presence, for your questions, and um, let's see what the future holds. And maybe we can get uh, catch up in a, in a few months or in a year to see how everything has been evolving. Thank you very much again. Bye bye to all. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. bye, -bye.